This will be a day long remembered. Now I am the master. Welcome to another episode of Legends and Theories. And welcome to my review of the Rebel Ewing Fighter. This is a set from Rogue One, and I actually wanted to review this last week, but the set was damaged and I had to repair it. I didn't have enough time, so I'm doing it this week. I already know what set I'll be reviewing next week, and that'll be Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter. Then I think I'll go through a few other Rogue One sets. But with this, I... I want to do this because of Andor's release, and this is one of the few sets that had Andor in it that I own. And the other one is the Scarab Face, which is now in was, was even worse condition than this. I had all the pieces to this. I just had to repair that. So let's first look at the figures. And the first one is the Rebel Ewing Pilot. And with this, he is a Rebel Pilot in a blue uniform. He has a more secure expression on one side and a more happy one on the other one. And with that, they can also, I believe, work as pilots for other fighters if you want. I think it's similar in design to the Y-Wing pilot also. But with that, I usually uh, you have one in the Y-Wing, although I don't remember if it came in that set. And that'll be one of the sets I'll be reviewing soon. The next is, I believe... His name is Zabistian. I don't know the exact pronunciation of it, but something around that. And he has this cool molded head that only appeared in this set from what I could tell. He has some pretty cool details and a blaster rifle. And yeah, it's a cool figure to have that's completely unique to this set. Next, there is just a Rebel Trooper. He has a pretty cool design on him. He doesn't have back head printing and has a pretty generic head print on him, but it's still really cool to have him. The next figure we have is Cassian Andor. And with this, he has his blue jacket on, a blaster rifle. You can see the little pieces of fur up here. And at the back, the back side, he has more of a smile on his face. And he has a more neutral expression on the front side. And yeah, with him, it's really cool to have him. The coolest figure in this set is the Jin Urso, who has a lot of gear on her. And this really cool exclusive helmet piece. She has two weapons. One of them is uh, a baton. I think that's what it is. It's, I'm pretty sure. She also has a blaster rifle. And with it, she has this little sack on, and she has I said, this really cool exclusive headpiece. On the back side, she has a more angry expression. And a normal one here. So there's this really cool cloak piece. And if you pop it off, which I'm just doing behind the camera, you can put this up. Take the sack off and the uh, thing, and you can see she has a really cool jacket design under it. And with that, you can put her head back on, and this is what she looks like without all that gear on. And yeah, she's a really cool figure, and probably my favorite one from this set. Moving the figures to the side. I'll just all this gear right here. Let's take a look at the Ewing fighter by itself. And with it, it has a really cool design on it. It looks really nice. There's one problem with this head, which I'll explain when I get there. But it has this really cool formation where you can pop the wings off that connects to this ball joint here. And you could turn it up to here where this ball joint connects over here. So it could be in flight mode. And with that, I'm just going to place it back over here. 
pop this side off and put it here and this is the U-Wing in flight mode it looks really cool like this you can take a look at it on the side but there's not as much room for that on my setup and finally from the back and there's a really cool look there I'm going to close the wings now because it's a lot harder to move this set around with the wings popped out in the small space I have here. And with it, it has a cockpit, which you could take this little area here, push to pop it up. Oh, I remember, there's a piece here that's missing. It's supposed to be a little, like, one of the more armored version of a claw piece. You can pop this up and you have a small little cockpit that you could go and grab the pilot or Cassian Andor, since he pilots it in the movie. You can place him sitting down in here, placing him on the little seat, have him leaned back a little, hopefully not accidentally hit the weapons fire control, push that back and have it pushed down, and with that, that reminds me of how to fire the uh, spring loaded shooters, where you push down this stud, and it will launch this out, and I like how they are hidden in this set, I like it a lot more when they do that instead of having it very obvious, shove down something like the wing. And with this, you can go and see just all the detail in it. It has some pretty cool stickers. The engines look really cool. On the back side, this ramp can pop down, although there's nothing in there as you can see. And with it, I'm going to cut for a minute. Sorry for the cut, I had to sneeze and didn't want that on the recording. But if we take a look at the bottom, it has these doors which can open. And those stud shooters that can pop out to shoot. And you can do the same on the other side. But the problem with this set I was mentioning earlier is it's impossible to fit a figure in here. So with it, I will grab two figures, ones that represent more of the average Lego figure, and that was with specialized, overly specialized helmets and stuff. So I have Cassie and the Rebel Trooper. One to represent one with a hairpiece, one to represent someone with a helmet. And with it, you can take a look just how hard it is to go and try and fit a figure in here. And it's even harder to fit them in so they could fit with the doors closing. You have to really wiggle them around. And with it, it's probably just better to have them loosely fit in there. Because it's really annoying to try and fit a figure inside this set. And you need to have some leverage at the bottom and hold it awkwardly. You see, I was able to fit him in here, but now I need to turn this turret around just to fit him inside. And you can close the door. And that's even more annoying from the other side because now you have even less leverage. So it's typically better to have it positioned like this. And you can take the Rebel Trooper and try to fit him inside. And with it, it's really hard to get them in. So that's one of the problems with this set. I wish it was a lot more accessible in here, but sadly it is not. And with it, you have to struggle a lot to fit them inside. And I'm going to have them put down on the bottom. There's this really cool canopy, which is from, I believe, the UCS X-Wing. And yeah, besides that... That's really all the play features. And it's a really cool set I would definitely recommend to get. Again, as long as you can find it for a reasonable price, I'm not going to go and ask anyone to pay an extreme amount of money and recommend them do that. But if you find it for a reasonable price, 
I would definitely get it. And I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments. And I'll see you on the next episode of Legends and Theories. Thank you for watching this episode of Legends and Theories. Please subscribe, like the video, share the video, leave a comment, check out the video on screen, and may the force be with you.